Hey everybody, welcome to Let's Paint Live. I'm Kirsten and I'm a designer here at Plaid in the studio. And we are so excited about tonight. We are excited about our little bunny painting that we are gonna do. We're very excited that just a few days from now is Easter, happens to be one of my favorite holidays. And we're just like with Easter comes spring and beautiful fall or beautiful pastel colors and just kind of like a new excitement in the craft industry because the seasons change. So we are so excited for you guys to join us tonight. So for anyone out there that is new to Let's Paint Live, we just kind of want to give you an overview of what we do um, and what we offer you guys. So Let's Paint Live is free on Facebook. And what we do is for about one hour, we introduce you to some techniques and we learn all of the techniques to complete a painting in about an hour. Um, we do it the first Thursday of every month Every painting is different. Um, some are kind of, you know, in, in um, check with the season. Some are abstract. Some are a lot larger. This one in the back is one that has been super popular. So sometimes we go crazy and we do a large canvas. These are some of my favorites that we have done in the past. A really fun, bright floral. And then this was just maybe two weeks ago. But you guys can see all different styles, lots of different techniques. Once a month, Let's Paint Live. It is free. Um, we use all of the same paints and supplies. So if you have our kit, you've got everything you need for every painting every single month. So I wanted to introduce everybody to Dylan. So Dylan is in the studio and he will be on the chat if you guys have any questions you can give those questions to dylan he is fabulous at answering them we'll talk back and forth um, we just really most important is we want you guys to have the best experience possible so chat with dylan chat with me please know that if you're not following along with us tonight and you just want to watch or maybe you have to sneak away early we load these all on to our website and so you can find, I think we have over a hundred different paintings. So you have an entire library of paintings, again, from Christmas to abstract, to big, to small, um, to animals and florals that you can access whenever you want with the supplies, the video that will teach you all of the paintings in our library. So I think I covered everything, oh, but most exciting. So with all of our painting, in paintings in Let's Paint Live, we have got a Let's Paint Live kit. And the kit you guys can see right here. And this kit is fabulous. Um, it's everything that you need. Again, if you purchase the kit once, we make sure that all of the classes, month after month after month, that we are gonna teach you, the only supplies that you need are what is in the kit and your surface, whether it be this size canvas or a smaller or a larger canvas, but all of the colors and the brushes that you will need are in our Let's Paint Live kit. So Dylan will put the links to all the colors that I'm using. He'll put a link to the brushes that I'm using. And we definitely want to share with you that our Let's Paint Live kit is available on Amazon and it is available on walmart.com. And it is also available, of course, on platonline.com. Um, but if you're using open stock colors, I'll show you before we get started what colors that you'll be using for that. So most importantly, we do this every month in an hour. You learn to paint a painting with us for free. Go back to our library. I'm right, about 100. There's probably more than 100 yeah. that you can access whenever you want. Um, and then Let's Paint Live Kit. It's such a great gift. It's such a great basic for someone who wants to learn a lot of different techniques. Um, and once you have it, you can access our libra library and have everything that you need. All right, so we try to give a minute for everybody to kind of get set up, get onto the, onto the Facebook Live with us. So how's it looking? Yeah, so everybody, just to be clear, we have a lot of people on both YouTube and Facebook, and this is a completely free class. Please don't um, click any links in the comments that would drive you away from this page. You don't have to do anything other than watch this lesson. Kirsten's here teaching. Uh, sometimes we get some comment spam and there's some confusion around that. So I just want everybody to know that you are here. This is the lesson. <laughs> we are teaching you the lesson. You don't have to go anywhere else. Yep. And um, like Kirsten said, we do have the kit linked 
in the description of these videos, but um, we have, uh, you can get all the colors specifically that Kirsten is using tonight, but you can also go to walmart.com or amazon.com and just search Folk Art Let's Paint Live kit and you can find this kit. So we just wanna make sure we overstate that as much as possible. Yes. So you guys know exactly where to get these things. Um, and it's all together, like Kirsten said. Perfect. It will teach you every single one of these lessons. So Absolutely. I think we're ready it's to get started. It's a great kit. Okay, so really quick, I wanna show you guys what supplies I'm using for anyone that jumped on late um, or is not using the kit, but using the open stock items. So what colors that we are using today? We are using Folk Art Matte Acrylic, and we are using Dutch Aqua. We are using Baby Pink. Very few colors tonight. We're using Daffodil Yellow. We are using Lavender. So let me show you those as a group. Again, if anyone's late to the class and they're running to get some of their Folk Art Acrylic paints out of their storage. A purple, a lavender, a light blue, a pink, and a yellow. A group of pastels to make our beautiful spring Easter background. And then some basics. We've got linen. We have got licorice. We have got thicket. And we have got cafe latte. So the tan is our bunny. The tan, the black, and the white will be our bunny. And then the pastels are our beautiful background. Okay. We are going to use the brushes that you get in the Let's Paint Live kit. But again, for anybody that is using open stock brushes, but let me tell you, you should get this kit for no other reason than these fabulous brushes. You get really any brush you would ever need to paint, period. Um, if you're using open stock and you're not shopping out of the kit, I always say a large flat brush, a medium flat brush, we will need a liner. This is a number one liner. This is a three quarter flat. This is a 12 flat. I'm gonna stick the eight flat out and then I'm actually gonna get rid of the rest. But if you're new to us again, don't not take this class if you don't have the exact brushes or even if you don't have the exact colors. If you've got a folk art yellow that's a little lighter, a little darker, come on and join us. If you have a pink that's a little bit lighter or a little bit darker and it's your favorite folk art pink, join us. Your bunny can be a little bit brighter or I'll show you how to add white. Okay, then we need a 12 by 12 stretched canvas. Every single class I have ever taught, people ask, what if it's 10 by 10? What if it's 16 by 12? Whatever size, it's still gonna work, you guys. Our goal is to teach you techniques. So still join us. A palette, whether it be a paper, paper plate, a ceramic plate, or palette paper. Water for your brushes, and then a stack of paper towels. Okay, oh, I did call out on the supply list. You guys are gonna need just a basic chalk stick. It can be, it can be brand new, it does not have to be brand new, just a basic chalk stick, and then a blow dryer. And the blow dryer is pretty consistent for us here on Let's Paint Live, and the reason for that is the one hour. We want you guys to have a beautiful painting that is done in the one hour, so we accelerate our dry time and cheat just a little bit. All right. So Dylan, do we have any questions about what we're gonna be using before we get started? No, I just wanna say once again, you guys are here. This is the lesson, so we're happy to, uh, that you're joining us. I see we've got a bunch of people from the States. We've got people from overseas in the UK. Um, I so, love this. Yeah, let us know where else you're joining from. We love seeing so many people. There's a lot of people who are new. Oh, so welcome that's exciting. In. This, is, this will kind of set you up for all of the previous lessons that you're, you'll be able to find either if you're on our YouTube channel or on our Facebook page. This lesson will be available right after we're done. Yep. So if you, for whatever reason, can't keep up with Kirsten or you need to go back and you want to spend a little more time, mm -hmm. this lesson will be available again. So this isn't like a Zoom class where it's over. Nope. It's living here on whatever page you're on. Forever. So, yeah, so it's here. <laughs> so you can always come back to it. You've got the whole weekend to paint your yes. bunny. Um, but we're going to be going um, pretty quickly here so that yeah. we, can, we can get the whole painting across, but and we're really we, excited. We will do our best to answer any questions because we really, again, we love, oh, this is my favorite part. So when you're all done and, or tomorrow, tag us in your photos and tag them at hashtag plaid on, no, plaid, plaid crafts. crafts. I should know that between the website <laughs> and this. Um, Please, you guys, we love seeing what you guys painted. So tag your little bunnies on 
hashtag plaid crafts because we love to see what everyone has done. Okay, so let's get started. So the very, very first thing that we are gonna do is you are gonna get your folk art thicket, which is a really, really dark green, like a dark hunter green, and you are gonna simply base coat your entire canvas with thicket. We have so many new people here. We're really, really excited to have you guys in. Um, Kirsten's one of our regular instructors. We have a group that kind of rotates throughout. Um, so there's a lot of different painting styles in Let's Paint Live. So we're, we're so excited you're here and I'm sure we will have a painting technique for you. Oh, absolutely. So guys, to create the base coat, there is no right or wrong to this. You can see that the coverage of the Folk Art Matte Acrylic is fabulous. You'll probably get a very solid base coat with one simple coat. Do not apply a second coat. Do not overthink your base coat if you have some brush strokes that show. All we really want to do is work on a dark surface as opposed to working on a light white canvas. And so, this is an underpainting technique if you're new to painting. So Kirsten's just putting a base coat down first. Yep, I love to work on a dark color. It's ap actually, I don't know if I've ever taught a class on Let's Paint Live that I don't use a dark color. Some people will do black, some people will do navy. I love a dark green, especially with these pastels. And the neat thing, about painting on a dark background is rather than going in and adding lots of different highlights, building your color from the bottom up, you're almost doing the opposite. You're adding color on top and the dark color is coming through, automatically creating that contrast, which makes it look like you have shaded and highlighted, but it's really that dark background coming through. Kirsten, we have um, one group that is from Tasmania, Australia, and they oh. are using this as their homeschooling lesson today. Oh my Isn't gosh. Isn't that cool? Hi in Australia, that is, that is wonderful. I hope you guys enjoy it, and I hope you have the cutest little classroom of bunnies when we're all done with this. We've got people from California, Arkansas, Upper Peninsula of Michigan. We're really excited that you're all joining us. And again, this is our monthly live stream, everybody. So everybody who's new, we do this every single month, the first Thursday of every month. We also have a lot of other painting lessons that happen throughout the week. We have a mm -hmm. weekly painting live stream, um, but this is our Let's Paint Live program. And you can come find this, like I said, the first Thursday of every single month. Okay, guys, so what I wanna show you guys, and this is just a tip. Again, we wanna get to the fun stuff. So you can see the edge of the canvas that I'm working on doesn't have any staples, doesn't need to be framed. But what I like to do in our one hour classes is only paint the painting. But what I like to tell everybody is when you are done with our one hour class, tomorrow, a week from now, or later this evening, I always say, do to the side what you've done to the top. So I have base coated the top green, I'll go back after this class and I will paint the sides green. I will let that dry just like we're about to do. And then when we create this beautiful background on the front, you are going to go and do that on the sides. I just love to tell everybody I'm not focusing on the sides, but do to the side of your canvas exactly what you did to the top and you will have beautiful results. Okay, so I am going to sneak out our little blow dryer and I am going to just blow dry my base coat because one thing with acrylics, for those of you that are new, working with acrylic paints is magical because you can do everything that you could do with oil paints, but you can do it so fast. Um, you can layer color. Acrylic dries very, very fast, but we want it to dry a little bit faster. So I'm gonna blow dry this. That's okay, no immediate questions. Yeah. Um, so just get a good thicket green base coat don't worry about these little areas that would need a second coat if this was a piece of furniture and then make sure it is completely dry. Okay.
Okay. Perfect. And again, I just, I'll probably repeat myself over and over. I apologize for those that have, um, have painted before in our advanced level, but we want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to learn all of the wonderful techniques that we are going to be doing tonight. Okay, so we have got a dark green base coat. Now, some of you might have asked, where's my pattern? I need a pattern. Me personally, I love to paint without a pattern. And I love even more to teach people to paint without a pattern. And the reason for that is I think so many times what a pattern does is it kind of stops you from focusing on the techniques and what will make you a better creative painter. And you, if you're new to painting, you almost treat it like a coloring book and you fill in the areas where I put white, you put white, and that's not as fun. And you can see our little bunny, he is not perfect. All the black outline we'll learn in a little bit is like a watercolor technique. So his whiskers are not exact. His little outline is not exact. That's how I want you guys to view all of the elements that we are creating tonight. Okay. So with that said, everybody should have a dry base coated canvas and a piece of chalk. If you've got yellow or purple or blue, that's okay. But I do, I do kind of stress not a pencil and not a pen. We have sometimes people do it with a Sharpie or with a ballpoint pen. And that is one, you have to get rid of it and cover it. And two, it's just not as as efficient when applying a pattern because we want this to be loose and the concept of the bunny, not the exact details in the bunny. So I'm gonna keep this guy on the screen so you guys can look at him. And I always start with the biggest element that's kind of the center of the design. So we're gonna look at his little head. And I always love to tell people, kind of look at him in shapes. So his little cheeks are circles, his little head is almost like a figure eight. If you took right there and you drew an eight, a cursive eight, his little head is like an eight. Two little circles and a figure eight. So with that said, find the center of your canvas or have fun with it and put your bunny way to the left or way to the right. But find the center of your canvas and just kind of sketch a circle, a little snowman head. And then like the placement, I'm a little bit further down, maybe a hand from the bottom. I love to measure with my hands or my fingers. I'll go two fingers from the side or I'll go four fingers from the bottom and just lightly draw a circle. If you like your center, then draw two circles. And remember, we are not gonna paint this exactly. All you're doing is getting a sketch or placement for your little bunny. So now you've got his little cheeks. And then knowing the top of his little head is a little bit smaller, you're gonna just kinda go up from that circle we did and kinda dip in to create the little nook in the top of his little head. And remember, abstract, brush strokes, loose and fun, so don't create a pattern that you are gonna then use like a coloring book. If you want to just take your finger and lightly brush over some elements to just kind of get a better idea like, oh, I like that, or oh, I want that a little bit taller, just use your finger or a paper towel and you can see your bunny's little head already developing. And all I did right here is I just kind of connected with a soft little curve what creates his chin. That's the hardest part, you guys. Never be intimidated when you don't have a pattern. Okay, so then the rest of his little body is just kind of connecting his head to the bottom of the canvas. And I'm just gonna do just a little sketchy edge. I might make him a little wider, actually a little chunky bunny. So that's his little body. And then his ears, and if you guys want to, if you want to draw, you're more comfortable drawing a little antenna or a little line to represent where you want his ears, that is perfect. Because again, all we're doing is laying the pieces that will become our painting. So if you did have, if you did draw little lines, so little antennas, he'd be a cute little ladybug. 
Now all you're going to do is find the top and just connect the line to the bunny's head to make one little ear. I'm just going to widen that out just a little where it attaches to his little head. And then on this one, I just want his ear to face out a little bit. But remember, if your bunny ears are not exactly like mine, that is okay. So on the top of that line, I'm going to go a little bit more curved up and over, and I'm going to bring his ear a little bit more to the side of the canvas. And then I'm going to connect it to his little head. I'm going to erase that. Kirsten, we had a good question. How would you draw it if you wanted a folded ear? Oh, I love these Put tricky it up a little these bit. tricky participants. What would I do? So I would don't do what I'm doing. <laughs> if this is your little bunny head, I would draw my antennas. I would cut one antenna in half. I'm winging this, by the way. And I would, what would I do? I would go there and then there and then there and then there. So I would then you erase your middle line. So you've got one ear shorter than the other and flopped over. This will be the perfect example why I love chalk, not a pencil, is because then do, 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 your pattern's all gone. A lot of people do pencil, Sharpie, ball pen, and then most of the fun, it, or most of the time we're having fun, you're working to cover up your pattern and you never want that. The chalk, almost dissolves into your paint and it's magically gone. Okay, I hope that helped the person with the floppy ear, which mm -hmm. that really is cute. Okay, then you guys, I'm just gonna sketch this little outside edge of the ear. So, not perfect, but I know a lot of beginners really like to have placement of all of their design elements. So this little ear is pointing right at us and this little ear you can see is turned so right here, we'll have a little bit more on the outside and a little bit less right there. And if you guys, you, if your ears are different, if both of your ears are flopping down, that is adorable. I love it when we see these, when you hashtag them at Plaid Crafts, and they're different than mine. Okay, so now we're going to paint over it, but again, I know people like it there for placement. So I'm going to draw a little line and a little line and then a V for his little nose, and then his eyes. A lot of people, and if you do that, that's adorable, make it more of a whimsical bunny and dot cute little eyes right there. But I wanted our little bunny to be realistic. So over here on the side by his cheeks. Oh, really quick, we have your little bunny in the chat, Evan, Evan oh, Jones. Oh, my little bunny. Hey, bunny. <laughs> <laughs> that's my kid. And, and if it, he's painting, I'll give him $100, yeah, but I we, know he's we not. We would all bet a lot on that right now. <laughs> you uh, know he's busting to get a fake painting right now. <laughs> really quick, um, are you going to be painting the bunny or the background first? We have a question. Oh, we have all of I these know, people. It's a lot. So we are going to be painting the bunny first. Okay, all right. If that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So we've got our little bunny. I am not, and I would recommend that you don't, I am not going to draw the whiskers. I am not going to draw, for you guys that are looking at all of the little details, the little loose hairs, the eyelashes, the whiskers, do not draw that with your chalk because we are going to add that at the very, very, very end. Okay, so kind of look at your bunny. He looks a little bit mean, but when he gets the little dots in his eyes, he'll be so much happier and so much cuter. Remember, this pattern is placement for where, because we'll have a little highlight there that'll, you know, kind of accent his nose. So you should have the basic pattern for your little bunny. All right, now for the palette. You are going to need the coffee, oh, there we go. You're going to need the coffee latte. That was sealed, sorry. You're gonna need the linen. And I always tell people that less is more on your palette. We really don't need a lot of paint. These two ounce bottles, you will do a lot of our Let's Paint Lives with those because using one, the technique that I'm doing, which is kind of a dry brush technique um, and the quality of the folk art acrylic you are not gonna need a lot of paint. So I always see people squeeze out most of their bottle 
on their palette and then they're like, oh my gosh, I don't have any paint left. Less is more. You can always add paint to your palette. Okay, so tan linen and wicker white. I'm going to shake up my wicker white and put a little bit more on my palette. Okay, so I think I just mentioned dry brush technique. All that means, not a fancy term, all that means is we are not going to paint with any water. Um, a lot of times people get in the water and they think a wet brush has to go into their paint. Sometimes it does, most of the times it doesn't. And for this technique tonight, you want the very least amount of water in your brush as possible. Of course, you'll wash it in between in your water, but then always have paper towels next to you to dry it off as much as you can on a paper towel. The reason we're doing dry brush is what that does is it allows this dark background that we created to come through. So you guys, I am gonna put a medium flat brush. You could use a 10, a 12, I'm using a 10, and I'm gonna go into that dark tan, and I'm just loading my brush, and I'm gonna tap on the paper towel. A tip for anyone that has never painted with me is less is more. Less paint on your brush is better if you're experimenting with this technique for the first time because you can always add paint to your bunny, but you can't take it off as easily. Um, so less is more. A dry brush and you're gonna load it. And then all we're gonna start doing is almost polishing or scrubbing. Someone said years ago in one of our classes, slip slap, which is a word I actually liked. You're just taking both sides of your brush and you're just randomly going, I'm gonna do the inside of this bunny's ear, one side of the brush, the other side of the brush. You're just very loose, filling areas with color. But you guys, this is what I want you to see, and this is what I want you to know is super important. See where the green is coming through? That's always, always a good thing. We're gonna layer colors, whites and blacks and pastels, but a little bit of green coming through is always a good thing. And when you're doing this dry brush technique, don't outline, don't do it in stripes, do it very random, and jump around your canvas. You can see I did the inside of the bunny's ears and his head. Now I'm gonna jump down here and add some brown to his body. The reason for that is if you do it in an order or you focus on one part, you'll start to build a pattern and your bunny won't be this soft, abstract watercolor look. It will be almost, it'll almost look like tile, like it's tiled together. So I'm still only going in that brown. I'm gonna do a little bit on his cheeks. I'm not covering it up. I'm not covering up the pattern and I'm also not covering up all of the areas of, in the bunny. I'm simply starting to layer colors. And then the same brush, I'm not gonna go in water. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of the linen, tap it on your paper towel, because remember, less is more. And I'm just gonna go and add a little bit of that linen. I'm working around the pattern, but not in an outline format. Like I'm not outlining his little nose. I'm not outlining the contour of his head. I know it's there, so I'll do a stroke that way, and then I'll do a stroke that way, but then I'll just polish color so I don't create a line. The main thing with this is no water and don't create a line. So here's his little chin. I'll kind of slow down and show you guys. So I don't want to contour and outline his little chin, but I'm gonna put a brush stroke there that bumps up to the pattern and maybe one there. Then I'll get some paint and I'll do one going that way and then kind of fill it in. And then I'll do a little one going that way and then fill it in. But then I'm gonna jump over here because I want that brown and that tan to just start layering on top of itself. I'm gonna go up to the little top of the ear and you can use just the chisel edge, which is the flat part of the brush, 
for these really thin areas like the top of his ear. But then you always want to do that same loose stroke in the bigger areas. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to use the chisel edge just to get color in the tip of his inside of his ear. I haven't done the outside of his ear because I'm going to do those white and I haven't done the outside of his ear. So you guys, now what I'm doing is you can see I'm jumping into the dark tan, I'm jumping into the light linen, never jumping into water, and there's no right or wrong. Sometimes Donna Dewberry, the famous one stroke painter, is on here, and you know she's very precise. One color on one side, one color on the other. We are not doing that. We are just going back and forth between the two colors, and we are basically base coating our bunny. but by not creating straight, perfect lines or straight, perfect outlines. If you want your bunny a little bit darker brown, add a little bit more of the dark color. If anyone out there is having fun and creating their own little bunny, I bet tomorrow we see some gray bunnies, which would be the same technique that I'm doing, but you would use a gray, a light gray, a dark gray, and white. I bet there's some kids out there that are doing, what is that candy? I don't like marshmallows. A peep, and then your bunny could be purple or pink or blue, and then you're doing the same thing with a dark purple, a light purple, and white. So this is a great technique, and all you need is a few colors of the same value. But can you see a lot of green is showing through? which is giving us a lot of great things. It's giving us the texture of the canvas, which adds an element to our painting. It's giving us what appears to be shading and highlighting with the dark coming through. So this simple dry brush technique really gives you the opportunity to add a lot of dimension to your bunny. I just want to remind everyone that this video will be available on our Plaidcrafts YouTube channel and our Plaidcrafts Facebook page in the video section uh, right after the live is over. And if you're having any kind of connection issues, just make sure you refresh your browser and it should bring us right back. Which brush are you using, Kirsten? I am using the number 10 flat. Okay. Okay, guys. So once you get the very simple basic base coat of your bunny, now all I'm doing is adding a punch of color, same two colors, the brown, the light brown and the dark brown, or light tan and dark tan, still no water, still same brush, but you can see how his little body is getting a little bit more detail. I'm not covering up the green, but I'm just adding a little bit more. And now I'm going to go kind of in the direction of his fur. You're going kind of from his chin and working just in a random pattern down and out. But make sure you guys, if you're new to painting, don't overthink these brush strokes because you can see they're very loose. That's what makes your painting uniquely yours. They're very loose. They're not going to match someone else's, but they don't have to. You're getting all of that detail by the dark green coming through and the overlapping of the two colors. And then, still same brush, no water. I'm just kind of removing some paint on my paper towel. I'm going to go into the wicker white, but with a brush that still has the tan on there. And I'm just going to do that same technique in areas that I want my bunny to be a little bit lighter. So I know around his nose, still very little paint, so you can see all of the layered colors and the green. To be safe, if you're new, go into your paint and then go on to your paper towel. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. 
You got a lot of compliments on your teaching, Kirsten, that it's very loosey-goosey, and it's, <laughs> I think it's helping everybody relax. Oh, I'm glad. I do love, I love, I, what I said about the pattern earlier, I love when people, especially the person that is new to painting, is not following a pattern because I just think it allows you to be more creative and to learn the technique, which if you love painting, you'll use all of these techniques over and over and over again. So I appreciate that. Okay, so you can see his little cheeks are starting to develop. I'm gonna go right into that wicker white again, and I'm gonna just kind of, not an outline, but I'm gonna give a little white dimension to the side of his little chubby cheeks. That was, see how that's a line? You don't want any lines on your painting. So you're gonna go over it and polish that. But I want you guys to see, and maybe if I hold this up, see how my chalk pattern, oh, there we go, is still there enough so I haven't lost the comfort of following a pattern. He's kind of cute. He looks like the Velveteen Rabbit. He's very cute. I think he may be cuter than the original. I'm excited. Dylan. I, you never know. I go, Dylan, I plug his you're, ears. You're making two separate <laughs> little bunny guys. I might leave him like this, the Velveteen Rabbit. I might mm -hmm. start crying. Um, also, we'd love to hear some name suggestions. I think we oh. named this kind of a generic bunny painting, but we want to know a name. So if you have any suggestions. I already know. Do you want to know to mine? Hear, what's yours? I've just decided Leo. Leo? Love. For doesn't the one you're look, painting now? I'm naming him now. Okay, great. His name is great. Leo. There you go. Does anyone think he does not look like a Leo? Yeah, let's have some other Look at Leo. Okay, now I have to focus. Um, okay, so a little bit of white, but no line. And look at how, like it's like fur. It's just coming out because of the technique of dry brush. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to show you guys what not to do. You don't want an outline on your bunny. So quickly while your paint is wet, do the technique that we've been doing. See the difference in a straight line and then just adding layers and layers as a, bri a dry brush technique. I'm gonna do the same thing on this little eye. I'm gonna go in now. The outside or the fur of his little ears are mostly white. So I'm going to do, again, the same, less is more. You can use the chisel edge, which I should be better at explaining that. The chisel edge is the flat edge of the very tip of your brush. And a lot of people think a flat brush has to do strokes that big. But if you use your chisel edge, wait, let me get on the green. Look how thin your brush is. So I'm using the chisel edge to get into the tip of the little guy's ear. But then I'm polishing and making sure I don't have any straight lines. See how it comes together? I'd love to see what people think of not using a pattern. We have a lot of people saying they're really enjoying this. Oh, I love that. Pattern. Yeah. Uh, we also have a lot of names coming in. We've got Hopper, Hazel, uh, Phil. Phil, that's my dad. <laughs> that's a cute one. If that's Evan. Uh -huh. Is it Evan? <laughs> no, no. Boo Boo, Moxie, Harry, Hopper, Gilbert, Wilbur. But my favorite is Dylan. That was a suggestion. Oh, a mm -hmm. Dylan. Yes, a I, Dylan. Did, I didn't suggest that, but. I need to know why Phil is Phil. Because Phil's funny. That's it's all they said. They just Phil. said Phil. I love it. Mm -hmm. I like Phil. We've also got some suggestions of things that you could add to the painting, like a bow tie. That's a great suggestion. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. Absolutely. Some flowers in the little bunnies. In the little bunnies. I said hair, but I meant ears. But you guys, even if you left it like that, look how great that looks. I mean, we would do the background, but meaning the details on the bunny. So I want my little bunny, I want Leo's ears to have a little pop of white. So I'm just putting white over white. And what that does is it's layering so you get what appears to be shading and highlighting, it appears to be a bunch of different shades of white and tan. But you guys, we've only used three colors so far. So while you're saying that, I, I, you know, I know everybody's probably trying to keep up first time painters here tonight, but take a second and s s hold your painting up and kind of look back at it. I bet you all are looking at a bunny and I bet you didn't think you could do that. I hope you're looking at a bunny. I, I think <laughs> you'll probably be I amazed you with are. yourself right now. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. 
Each bunny is different, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you guys, same brush, no water. I'm going to go in there on my paper towel. And I'm thinking just a few areas, no right or wrong to this, but I'm going to kind of darken and just add same technique, dry brush. I'm going to add, I think, a little bit more brown to Leo's little head. And I'm going to add a little bit more brown to the inside of Leo's little ear. But make sure you remember, having the green show through, stopping here is a fabulous thing. Just because I'm adding more does not mean that you do. I always say if you are happy with how many layers you've got, always stop. You can always go back, even after the background's done, even tomorrow after it dries and you, if you're new to this and you're like, oh, I'm a little bit more comfortable. I'm gonna dry brush some more. You can add more colors to your bunny tomorrow. But in tonight's class, if you are happy with the highlights in his cheek, the way the texture is coming through on your canvas, I always say less is more and stop where you're at. I can't tell you, Dylan will vouch for this, how many times I've just kept going because it's fun, and then I'm like, oh, I should have stopped a minute ago. We also have someone in the comments that understands our pain as far as the patterns go, that people are a little shaky. They work at um, an art center, and they always have to use patterns because people are a little unsure of themselves. But that's what we're here to teach you, that you don't have to be unsure of yourself. Right. You can use a pattern, and we have a lot of great painters at Plaid that use patterns, and we're not saying anything bad no. about them because some paintings really need a pattern. Absolutely. But, um, but the whole point of this program, the Let's Paint Live program, is that you walk on, you get your supplies, and you leave this session, this live session, with a finished painting. Yes, and Dylan had mentioned it earlier. We have one, two, three, four, five. No, we have a lot of consistent teachers. Some always use patterns. Some never use patterns. I love to, I think I said it and I'm probably right, I only paint on a dark background. So all of us are different and you'll find a style that you like. You might skip a class every now and then because it's not the look or it's not a technique that, that you feel strong about. That's what we love about our library and introducing a new painting every month. Is it, it truly is something for everybody. Okay, so when I was saying that, all I did right here, you guys, is the same thing that we did earlier, but I put a little white on my brush and I just did a few strokes going down and out that just kind of represent that fluffy hair on the chest of the bunny. Okay, I think I'm calling it. For now, my bunny, Leo, is done. He looks great. Okay, same brush. Clean it in the water. Now, we are doing the background, and you can use the same number 10. I find that, and Dylan, I'd be curious what people say to this. I feel like the new painter tends to go towards a smaller brush. It feels more like a marker or a crayon or a colored pencil and it kind of gives them some confidence. So you can stay with a smaller brush. We're doing the background. If you want to go to a quarter inch or a three quarter inch brush, go for it. The technique is the same. I'm going to be using a number 12 flat brush, but you can also use the number 10 brush that we did for the bunny. All right, on your palette, you are going to need the light pink, the daffodil yellow. How am I doing on time? I never know if I'm too fast or too slow. You're doing great. Dutch aqua, which is such a gorgeous blue. Robin's egg blue is what it feels like to me. And then lavender. And if you guys don't still have wicker white on your palette, you're going to need a little bit more white. I always have white on my palette, really, no matter what I'm doing. So everybody, we are doing the exact same thing. We are doing dry brush. We are going from pink into yellow, which will give us these little areas that kind of became peach. We are, one thing that we are gonna do, and this is a tip, is we are gonna start with colors that naturally like each other. Yellow and pink like each other. They make peach. Yellow and purple, not necessarily best friends. They don't muddy, 
One, because folk art acrylic is fabulous. The way that the pigments are added are fabulous. It's thick and creamy, so it doesn't muddy. But again, yellow and purple, not best friends. But they blend beautifully. Purple and blue, very good friends. So we're gonna kind of just keep that in your brain that we'll go from yellow to pink first, then we'll go from purple to blue, but it'll all come together beautifully. Okay, so with that said, no water, and I am gonna just load the yellow on my brush. But what I am gonna do, because I love the pastels, is I'm gonna dip in the wicker white. You can't, you can't do this wrong. I don't want anyone on there to ask, is it two parts yellow to one part white? It doesn't matter. You're gonna dip into the yellow and then you're gonna dip into the white. All you're doing is softening the yellow. If you're more confident, dip on your paper towel. Same technique. I'm gonna do it really slow, which is gonna feel really weird, but you're doing a stroke and then you're doing a stroke. Then you're doing a stroke, then you're doing a stroke. You're going on one side of the brush, then the other side of the brush. You're not creating snowflakes. You're not lined up like subway tiles. You really want to jump around, jump right off the edge of your canvas. The reason for that is see how your first stroke has the most paint in it, then a little bit less, a little bit less, and then almost like a dusting. That's the look that you want, especially when we're building such a unique background with four different colors. So I'm gonna go back into the yellow, back into the white, and I'm gonna to go to another section of my canvas. You can go here, you can go here, you just wanna be really random. And I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna try to do it slow again. I hope this helps. One long stroke, another stroke. I'm not pushing down, I'm not trying to base coat that area. I'm just polishing color but you wanna be very loose. I'm trying to think where I could show them what not to do. You don't wanna go like this and create subway tiles because you'll never be able to get that pattern. What I'm sure most of you have noticed is when you do that technique, you guys, the paint's almost dry when it goes onto your palette. So if you do that, there is no, well this is palette paper, there is no moving that around on your canvas. So you always want to be very loose and very random. Looks funny for now. Actually, it's kind of cute. Okay, I'm in the yellow. Same brush, now I'm just gonna go in the wicker white. I still had the yellow on there, but I'm gonna treat that as a color. I'm gonna stay close to the yellow. I'm not gonna go here or somewhere there is no yellow. I'm almost create, no I am, I keep saying almost, I am creating another value of yellow just by dipping that brush in the wicker white. If you don't like yellow and you want to skip yellow and just do pink, blue, and purple, perfect. If there's another color you want to add in, like a really cute apple green, adorable. That's what we get most excited about tomorrow is seeing what you guys did different. We love that. Yeah, so um, just so you know, uh, for all of our new members, we have a great group. This is our page. This is our company page, Plaid Crafts. But if you search for the Let's Paint with Plaid Facebook group, um, you can find an entire community of painters just like you uh, at all different skill levels from experts down to beginners that are probably starting this class and their first painting that they'll post is tonight. Um, but you can post your paintings in there. It is a safe place for you to express your creativity and have creative conversations. And you'll be opened up to a whole new variety of people that you can uh, create a community with. And it's a very strong Facebook group. It's I believe, yes. over thousands of members and it served us so well through the years. So please join that as well. And after you're done painting your painting, post it in the Let's Paint with Plaid Facebook group. Please, <laughs> we love to see them mm -hmm. and name it. Um, okay. So you guys, no water, right on to that. Let me actually get a clean paper towel. I'm just drying off my brush and I'm gonna go directly into that baby pink. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing that we did. I think, oh, this is a good place for pink. I am gonna outline just a little, but not a line, more of the 
dry brush just to get close to the little guy's ear without creating a line. And I'm going to start overlapping the yellow. Not completely, but I'm just going to get, oh, and you can see, that's what I love. Let me see if I hold that up. See how a little bit of peach or another value formed? That's what we love. That's the technique that I love. Okay, I've got some pink there. I don't want to be even. I don't want it on the same spot, so I'm going to jump up here, falling off the edge of the canvas. Remember, less is more. Pick up paint as you need it, but don't have too much because you can always go back and add. I just want to let everybody know I just posted and pinned the comment, um, the link to our Let's Paint with Plaid Facebook group. So after this video is done and you've painted your painting, don't worry about doing it right now. You've got to work on your bunny. Uh, but you can click that link and that'll bring you to our public page. You can join and um, be a part of the community. I love that. I also want to bring something up. We had a great comment. Um, I love that this is free. Sip and paints are pretty expensive. And you know what? We love our paint and sip instructors out there. They're the ones who paved the way for us to even have this kind of program because people knew that, that um, style of painting, but th that's really the big focus here at Plaid is that we make really great products and we try to support them with free education. We want to let people know how to use our products and share how wonderful they are with everyone. So that's why we do this. You know, paint and sip classes are wonderful um, and they have, there's so many people that work really hard all across the country and the world to teach those classes and we're just trying to participate in the only way we know how and that is to provide you the same kind of content but for free so that we reach a bigger audience and and share the, the love of all of our amazing products like folk art. Absolutely, and I hope they're on. I don't know if they are. I met a group of women, Dylan, at Pinners, which is a fabulous show, consumer show, and there's six of them, Dylan. They get together every single week, and they paint a painting, and they do a lot of those sip, sip mm -hmm. and stroke classes, yep. and they love them, but they were even saying, they're going to still do that concept, but they're going to use our classes and they'll go. be the teachers. So we loved that idea. Like yeah. that's what we want to do. These classes, these videos are up there for you to use and reuse and teach. And, and that's a good thing about the Facebook group. Maybe if you're um, a little bit secluded wherever you live or you don't have a big uh, community that you could just hang out with in person, that's what the Let's Paint with Plaid Facebook group is for. So you can build that group whether you already have those friends built in or not. You've We've got a lot of those commenting in our um, both of our streams. Uh, you might know there's some people giving some really good advice on both sides. <laughs> and those are some of our members of our Let's Paint with Plaid Facebook group. They're active in our lives. They do all of our paintings. They give you tips. They give you kudos. Um, we're all about that. And we're really excited to have you all and grow our group. It's managed by our in-house painters, Andy Jones and Chris Williams and um, they make sure that it's a nice safe space for everybody and they make sure everybody is just yep. talking creative. So please join us, we'd love to have Yes, you. we would love it. Okay guys, so I've got pink and yellow, which remember, you can go in and add more pink in another spot, but I took that same brush, dried it on my paper towel, and now I went right into my blue. And I'm gonna do, all we are doing is exactly what we've been doing and the goal is to cover up, not cover up completely, but to create that soft pastel border, or background, sorry. I went into the white, the white over the aqua, back into the Dutch aqua. You can see how that aqua is so, it's really amazing how the aqua covers the yellow, but blends all at the same time. That is one of the fabulous characteristics of the folk art acrylic. It just, you got to work really hard to muddy it up and mess up the colors. I'm going to jump over here and do some blue. And all I'm doing is going back and forth. If I want it a little lighter, I'll take that same brush in the white. If I want it a little bit more like the Dutch aqua right out of the bottle but I'm overlapping the yellow. I'm being very loose with my stroke so I don't create a pattern. I do like to add white in random spots because it just softens it all together. Like actually right there I love, look at that, pink to yellow to like almost created like a soft green into aqua. Oh, I love when it works. 
and it usually works. I'd love to hear some of the beginners say that this is a technique that they've never tried and they're enjoying it so much. Okay, same brush, no water. I'm gonna dip into that lavender. And what is it? Is it, it's, yep, regular folk art lavender. I've got a green solid area up there. I'm gonna dip into the wicker white. Overlap the yellow. If you don't overlap, you guys are gonna get almost like a pastel camouflage. You really trust your creative side. Overlap those colors. I promise you will love it. Even if it just becomes a technique that you do in the future that is creating abstract painting right now, I cannot tell you how popular it is. And you just use this dry brush technique to create a beautiful canvas like that. Okay, I'm gonna jump over here and do a little bit of purple on the bunny's cheek. And I know I said yellow and purple are not necessarily best friends, but look how beautiful that overlaps. The way it overlaps like that is because of no water. They're not having to mix, they're just having to overlap and complement each other. I guess I've said it a million times, I really like dry brush painting. I've said it a few times tonight, huh Dylan? That's, that's one of your faves. <laughs> it is. They tease me here that when I like something, I really, really, really talk mm, about it a lot. Kristen loves to love. <laughs> yes, I do. I see that I have the blue, the Dutch aqua there and there. I'm like, hmm, maybe I'll have a little bit more right there. Only on the paper towel, not into the water. And I'm going to put a little bit of Dutch aqua. You can see I made sure that my two sides were not the same. Dutch aqua, pink yellow Dutch aqua. You don't want it to match. You want the bunny to look like he fell on the perfect spring background. Not that you painted around him and created an exact pattern. I love the pink. Same brush, no water. Outline a little, but don't keep that hard edge. And maybe, ooh, maybe a little yellow. I'm gonna do a little yellow up here by his ear. Probably every other, or at least every third time, I pick up a little of that wicker white. It just helps to soften and create, I want a really pastel background. If you guys like a bolder color, Definitely stay out of the wicker white as much as I'm in it. But if you want to kind of reproduce what I'm doing, I really like going in the wicker white almost every other time. You have a kind of funny comment here from Jennifer. Uh -oh. oh no, my bunny kind of looks like it fell. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay. The great thing about painting is you can always cover it up. Well, and we haven't done the eyes and the nose yet. Maybe okay. that will fix it. Yeah, yeah. We still got a lot of fun things to do. <laughs> Did she say, I, oh no? She said this is her, her first class here. So, so yeah, it's, oh no. If but, but you we're gonna be fine. are painting a bunny with us and you still have a bunny, mm -hmm. you've won. Yeah, doesn't matter what position they're in. Yeah, if you've got a bunny, whether he's standing, laying, sleeping, or fell, mm -hmm. you are good. So wait, Dylan, I think you're right. Like, I think I might like Leo better than I don't know his name. Poor guy, I gotta give him a name. Hopper. Um, Hopper? Hopper's very, or Hopper's canvas to the left is very sassy. He's very, very sassy. sassy. Leo is very sweet looking, right. a little goofy. Right. Yeah. Harold. I love that. Harold, Harold and then yeah. Leo. Harold okay. is sassy. So you guys, this is a little tip and it's up to you. Don't do it if you don't want to. If you want a softer background, because we're gonna do watercolor for his eyes, his nose, his outline, his little whiskers, you can finely wet your brush, actually clean your brush, dry it, tap dry it on the paper towel. And using just a wet brush, same slip slap or polish stroke, 
do a few with just water. And this is preference. It's a great technique for pastels. It's a great technique for colors that really work well together. But if you like this really nice abstract background, don't do it. This is just a bonus technique. If you want to barely soften, I'm going to do just this side and then I'm going to show you guys the difference. All I'm doing while the paint is a tiny bit wet is I'm just going in the water, no paint at all on my brush. Same back and forth irregular stroke. You don't want to flood your canvas. That's the only thing that this could really destroy. If you have too much water and you have water running on your canvas, you're going to have a mess. You're going in the water, tapping it on the paper towel, and you guys can see that all that's doing, you don't want to eliminate the dark green. See how it's still coming through? You still see the texture of the canvas, but it just softens it just a tiny bit. People that prefer the water, you can add that. This is actually gorgeous and maybe something that I like. I might like this side more, but I wanted you to teach you guys how we got there. But I'm going to make both sides the same. So I'm simply taking water. Start with a tiny bit of water. Tiny bit of water. Mm -hmm. Go in the water and then like hammer twice, three times on your paper towel. Because same with the paint. You can always go back and add water to move around your colors, but once you've done it, it's really hard to get a big um, soggy puddle of paint off your canvas. Tap on the paper towel. And the reason why it's not muddying and blending is because we did the dry brush technique first. Most of your folk art acrylic is dry, but just the tiniest bit is picking up and creating a wash. All righty, that's all I'm going to do because I love the abstract background. Okay, make sure you guys, we're going to get to the fun stuff, the outline and the details. Make sure there's not a big area of wet paint sitting on your canvas. Make sure there is not a big area of water sitting on your canvas. If it's not something that will easily blow dry, Take a paper towel and just lightly dab it, lightly to get off any excessive paint or excessive water. And now I'm going to just bear, well, you know what, I'm actually not. I'm not going to hit it with the blow dryer at all. Let me see if the reflection will show you guys. It probably won't. You can see I've got lots of areas that are a little damp with the water, but nothing that is rolling around. Okay, licorice, black folk art licorice. Put a little bit of that on your palette. Don't be scared. This is a new technique. It is fun, it is easy, and actually I'm not really that good of a painter. And the reason why I love this technique is because I can feel like a better painter than I am because a perfect painter, Andy Jones, for example, if you're new, you'll meet him when you go to platonline.com. Andy Jones would have every exact eyelash perfect. He would have the outline of the bunny ear perfect. I can't do that. And actually, this is a whole different look. So what we are basically doing is outlining with a watercolor technique. Let's see if I can get that up there. See how his little eye is actually bleeding? out into the background. See how his little whiskers, like just are a little bit watercolor and smudged. A few of them are right. Look at this, Dylan, this is the perfect side. Do you think they can see it? Yeah. There's absolutely. a whisker, but mm -hmm. then there is watercolor technique over it. A so it's not perfect, mm -hmm. but it looks, it looks artistic. It looks fabulous because watercolor is a genuine technique that people that people master. Um, but it also tonight gives us a little wiggle room for the beginner. 
Okay, so I am switching to my number one liner brush. I am going in the water. And what I want you guys to do is dip some water next to your black licorice and mix, pull that black licorice into the water so that part of your paint is exactly out of the bottle, but then the other side is a really watered down, can you guys see that? A really watered down wash. So real folk art black right out of the bottle and then a little water colored, almost inky black. Okay, go in your water and using just water, we're gonna do the ear first. Outline your bunny's ear with water. Don't do it exactly. Just get water where, not a lot, water where your base coat meets your pattern. And on the inside where the brown meets the white. That's the magic layer. This is the magic layer. This is your primer. This is what protects you from creating a pattern because we said patterns are dangerous. They're dangerous because you depend on them and then you don't get the fun look that makes it your own. So you guys can see it's not sitting like soup on top of my painting. It's just a damp outline. Then go into the thin black. We're gonna do the easiest part, the part that's the hardest to mess up first. So you are just, see, and I'm not going to hold it up because there is moisture on it. But we can see, zoom in a little bit. Can you zoom in a little? Yeah. It's not a perfect outline because a perfect outline would look dumb on an abstract background and an abstract bunny. See how it's bleeding and just starting to create some definition. And if yours is a little, a little softer, if yours is a little darker, don't stop. I promise we're layering colors and we're getting this really nice abstract outline that matches everything else that we've done that's kind of loose and abstract. Okay, then I'm going in the water and anything in the water, tap on your paper towel, anything that you think like that too, too straight of a line. I'm just gonna almost clean it up or remove that line, view the water almost as an eraser. You're erasing anything that is too much of a line. Okay. Inside the little bunny's ear, I'm going to take that watered down black, add more water to the side of your paint if you need it, and I'm going to just, oh, my hand was in the way. I'm going to just stroke, random strokes, but watercolor consistency, and kind of fill the bottom of that little bunny's ear. I'm going to move over to here, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to just put some watered down licorice in the bottom of the bunny's ear. But then to move it, I'm only going to go into the water. So you're going back and forth, water, kind of as an eraser, and then watered down licorice to shade or create the dimension. Still using the one liner. Now I'm gonna outline that little ear just like we did on the other ear. And not perfect, but where the background meets meets the bunny, and then I'm going to go into that watered down licorice and just start adding. It did it there perfectly. See how it's an outline that gives the little guy dimension, but it's not a straight pattern line. The watered down wash or watercolor keeps the the technique of the background, the bunny, the outline keeps everything soft. 
Just a reminder that Kirsten is using the Folk Art Let's Paint Live paint set that comes with a ton of paint colors as well as a set of 10 paint brushes um, to do all of our Let's Paint Live paintings. Like Kirsten said, we have over 100 lessons in our, um, on our YouTube channel and on our Facebook page. So there's so many different paintings for you to do with this kit and um, we're featuring a bunch of those colors tonight. But you can find that kit again at walmart.com. I just linked to that in the chat here or by searching Folk Art Let's Paint Live kit on Amazon. So we definitely wanna see you guys picking those up so that you can join us for all of our next lessons. So all I'm doing everyone is I'm just outlining with water the edge of my bunny. We're just gonna start defining him and bringing out some of his little details. And with the watered down licorice, the watered down folk art, I'm just adding that as a wash into his little outline. And if the line is too harsh, I'm simply going into just plain water because I really want it all to be soft. The background is soft. I want the outline to also be soft. But I also want him to just be defined so that we can create some of the details, like his little eyes and whiskers and mouth. I had already added water. And I'm just applying that watered down folk art over the areas that have water. Now under his little chin would have a little darker area, so I'm going to add some water there. Don't make it an exact oval or don't follow any of your brush strokes that are down like fur. You don't want to create a bib. I'm just putting a soft layer of just plain water and then I'm going to dip into that watered down licorice and just create a little shadow. This is a great area that you guys can see that if we were not painting on a dark background or if we had not dry brushed the browns in our bunny, this would be a step that we would have to do later, we would have to let everything dry, we would have to shade and highlight in a totally different way, but because we're doing a watercolor wash and because we've got all these layers already, we're able to add, and I always use my finger, you guys, so if there's a, there's a line that you don't want, just polish over it with your finger and you can see it softens the edge of anything that you've done with watercolor. Okay, so I dried off my brush and the paper towel. I'm gonna go in just the regular licorice and I'm gonna do a solid black eye. Now make sure you don't create a circle and make sure that you leave a little bit of the green around it. View it as an oval, not a bunny eye, because a bunny eye is intimidating, but a little oval or a little jelly bean since it's Easter. Everybody knows the shape of a little jelly bean, a little oval. So don't turn it into a hard bunny eye. Okay, I'm gonna go into my water, make sure I've got some thin down black. I'm going to actually add a little bit of just plain water there and create a little shadow on the little guy's forehead. I'm going to use my finger to soften that. And that's something you guys can choose to do. You can see an area like right here is too harsh of a line. So I'm going to go in with just water. Okay, now I'm going to go into, again, the regular folk art licorice, not watered down, and I'm going to draw his little nose, which is just a V. 
So view it as a V with a straight line. And then his little mouth is a wider V upside down. And while that is wet, I'm going to clean that same brush in the water and tap it on my paper towel, not too much water, but then I'm just going to put a wash over his little nose. That same black line, softening the black, but if you guys can see it, and I think it might be hard to see on our camera, but you can see that it's bleeding just enough. I'm going to make mine a little wider so you guys can see it on the camera to soften the black and not have everything loose and then a, a straight lined nose. You don't want that. Then I just love a little arch in his nose. So I'm just going to do water, a little placement for his whiskers, just water, just wetting the canvas a little bit around his eyes, just water. Tap on your paper towel and get that mil or that inky black, mostly water with a little bit of black. And just touch on those little areas where you added the water. And just scrub that black into those areas. All that's doing is just giving his little face a little bit of detail. And a little bit around, around his eyes. Because what that will do is it will look, what, look like what would have been a soft gray or two different shades of gray. But all it is is watered down licorice, kind of creating some details around his eyes. All right. If you guys want to, I know we're going a little bit long, but I want everyone that's new to us, if you want a, a highlight, let's say, go into your wicker white, add some to your palette if you don't have any. Take your medium flat brush or a smaller flat brush. If you're using our Let's Paint Live kit, I'm going to do the number eight. Same technique we've been doing all day and just go in there and pop just a little bit of bright white. And remember guys, you don't have to do that. If you want a little bit around your bunny's eyes, you're still scrubbing. You're not doing an outline. You're still doing the back and forth. If you want to just barely touch in that baby pink, and soften up his little cheeks a little bit just to give him kind of a little rosy cheek. I'm going to go on that paper towel. I'm only going into the wicker white. I'm going to give his little chin a little bit of white. Maybe add a few little highlights in his fur. Okay, I'm going to set that there. We are going to go back to our number one liner. Make sure that you have got a little bit of black or licorice on your palette and you are going to do equal parts water to equal parts paint. And what, this is going to be hard to show you guys, but I know you guys will be able to see it. Once you've got equal parts water, equal parts paint, it's very thin. You want to roll your brush and then kind of just draw a thin line to get any drips or excess paint on your palette. And with the lightest, my only tip for this is with the lightest pressure. I even tell people sometimes to hold the brush different than you would hold it. You would hold a pencil like this, which gives you control, but makes you naturally want to push down. If you hold the brush further up the handle, a really light, a really light pressure and a really light grip on your brush will allow you to get a really thin line. Go into that paint, but then drag just the edge of your bristles on your palette, very light pressure, and just pull 
a few whiskers from the center of your little guy's cheek. And the light pressure is the best tip that I can have. If you guys hold it like a pencil, I think your body is just programmed to apply the same pressure you would if you were writing a letter. So if you hold it at the tip, and some of your bunnies can have four whiskers, some can have three, some are longer, some are shorter. You want them to be different. And then I'm going to dip that in water and get most of the water off on my paper towel. Holding it at the end, I'm going to do just a watered down whisker. You can go over the whisker you already created. You can fill in with a shorter little whisker but you definitely want a damp brush because you want that watercolor look to bleed off into your little, your little whiskers. Same thing, half water, half black, roll the brush, do a practice line on your palette, very little pressure. You're going to do a few, they're almost like eyebrows. What are they on a rabbit? Jessie's one of our teachers and she would be so mad that I don't know the real word for a bunny's eyebrows. She knows everything about all animals. Very light pressure and you're just pulling one, two, three little whiskers. They're not whiskers. I'm going to say eyebrows. Sorry, Jess. From above the bunny's eye. You're going to do the same thing that are just the softest you don't want him to look like a fashion bunny, but you're going to do just a little, a few little light strokes that come off the top of his eye. And then a few also at the bottom. And if you want to skip this, if Leo doesn't have very many eyelashes, totally skip that. But that is just defining your little bunny and giving him some details. Alrighty, I'm going to clean off that brush. I'm going to kind of sit back and say, mm, do I want a little bit of white or a little bit of highlight? If you do, I'm going to do one little dry brush right there. I'm going to do one on the inside of his ear. I'm going to brighten up that just a little. Otherwise, I like him. I think he's got the perfect little face. And then, this is where, again, I've said it so many times, you guys, and I'm sorry. If I had a pattern for the detail or where the light hits the bunny's eye, it would not be natural and abstract and free-flowing like every technique that we've done so far. So what I'm going to simply do is I'm going to dip my finger into the wicker white. Not like a thumbprint, not like you're making an impression of your entire finger. I'm just going to tap in the wicker white and then I'm going to tap a few times on my palette. I don't want a per I don't want my whole finger covered. I just want enough paint on there and I'm going to tap some off. I'm not going to press down because if I let's see where I could do this. If I'm going to do it right there. Don't do this. If I press down, I'm obviously going to get a fingerprint. If I just tap once or twice in the same little area I'm going to get a very natural, a very irregular white dot that is going to put the little spark in this little bunny's eye. So tap into the white, tap on your palette, and then very lightly you're going to tap on your little bunny's eye. You're going to tap on your little bunny's eye and then you're going to take the extra paint off and you're just going to smudge it. And what that's doing is making it not a circle anymore. If you want your little bunny to have a little bit more white, same rule, less is more. Tap one more time, but very softly on the little bunny's eye. If you want to drag that along the bottom, just to give it a little, I'm going to hold that up actually. Just a little bit more white in his eye. Oh, he's so velveteen rabbit. Leo, that, 
I know Dylan, poor Dylan, he's probably answering all the questions. Pattern, pattern, pattern. A pattern for that would have been precise. It would have been exact. Your, your bunny's eyes wouldn't have matched the style of painting that we did on everything else. So, you guys, I think that's it, unless Dylan tells me we have tons of questions. No, I think we've no. had a lot of compliments, a lot of people Yay. that are saying they're going to go back and watch the video. And just a reminder to everybody, this will live here. So you, this is not disappearing. This will <laughs> yes. be back on Next our Facebook Easter. page <laughs> and on our YouTube channel. We, yes. have, we have a playlist in both locations for Let's Paint Live. You'll find over 100 lessons yes. in that playlist. This will be the first one, obviously, yep. the latest one but you can come back every single month. We'd love to have you back the first Thursday of every month. We also yep. have painting classes every week, Yep. every yep. Monday night. So. so you guys, thank you for joining us. I hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't love the bunny, come back next week. Oh gosh, where's next week's? That's what I was trying to get. But you do have some examples oh. of uh, yep. other paintings in the line that we want to show. So I think this was actually last month's. Mm -hmm. So again, every style is different. The, there's florals, there's landscapes, there's things that are just a palette knife, which is super exciting. Sometimes we have Donna Dewberry, sometimes we have Andy Jones and Chris and Jesse and Emma. So many teachers, so many techniques, so many fun things that you guys can paint. And again, we are here the first Thursday of every month. Let's paint live with folk art acrylic paints, go out there and get your Let's Paint Live kit because truly you guys will absolutely enjoy the paintings that we create. Thanks for joining us tonight. Happy Easter and we hope to see your guys' paintings. Share them with us at hashtag plaid crafts and name them. That was a great idea. So thanks guys. Thanks for joining us. Bye.